the uh, Russian Federation and its friends, and to a certain extent with the goodwill of the European Union, have for quite some time now been advocating the transformation of the OSCE into a full-fledged organization with a constituent document, something that <coughs> Russia calls a charter, but the, that the EU calls differently. The US is adamantly against it. Not simple. Uh, how do you uh, strengthen the uh, freedom of the media within, uh, within the uh, um, 56 participating states, which clearly have very different attitudes towards uh, how they help and support uh, their, uh, their media? This is one of the issues which Lithuania envisages to put at the heart of its own action uh, next year. This is not an easily consensual issue in spite of the fact that we have a representative of freedom of the media, which is incredibly free to express uh, herself. She's a, a Boston woman who has, taught, who has taught the hard way what it means to promote freedom of the media in her home environment, and uh, is uh, quite quite independent and quite strong in, in her views and expresses herself. Once again, have a look at uh, her statements which are uh, on, uh, on our website uh, altogether. So what we will be trying to achieve in, in Astana will necessarily be a complicated balance. What is emerging from the conversations between participating states is first there will have to be a, a core renewed commitment by all participating states to the existing key of the organizations, the founding principles of the Helsinki Final Act, the Charter of Paris of 1990. Please look at it again if you have an interest. As I said, it's a very important document. And uh, overall, all those elements which have come together to develop the OSC concept of comprehensive and indivisible security, which, by the way, has more or less been adopted now by everybody else, but uh, that doesn't mean that it is less, less valid. Second, I believe we will have to uh, rekindle uh, an, an understanding to have to work together on outstanding problems inside the uh, OSC areas. Uh, the arms control issue, which really needs uh, a, a strong revival. Uh, the settlement of the so-called protracted conflict, which uh, I think uh, uh, may not be on the first page of newspapers every day, but you have two armies deployed in the field between Armenia and Azerbaijan on the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, and uh, they, they, they shoot each other. And I think so far this year there have been more than 20 casualties uh, in, in, in this uh, sort of uh, strange, strange war. The situation in Georgia, which is far from settled, the situation in Transnistria, uh, perhaps the situation in southern Kyrgyzstan, which is uh, very unstable and uh, will probably require constant attention. And seen from the world, seen from Astana, I can tell you, it looks significantly different than the world uh, seen from from Vienna. You suddenly very close to, to China, you're very close to Iran, you're just next door to Afghanistan. Uh, you understand what, what, uh, what the impact on the neighborhood of the potential spillover from Afghanistan in terms of uh, radical uh, movements, in terms of trafficking of drugs, uh, means from the neighbors. And then there will probably be an agreement on new directions to tackle shared transnational threats. I mentioned uh, uh, Afghanistan, but those threats coming from outside of the OSC area. So what was initially uh, a, a process to uh, create stability within the area has now, like for NATO, clearly increasingly had to address the, the threats coming from uh, the neighborhood and from uh, outside of, uh, of the neighborhood. So it's a combination. Continue the uh, work that has to be achieved uh, uh, within the family, uh, which is uh, very far from being accomplished, and taking into account the new dimensions, keeping the project, uh, the project alive, the project of uh, basing security in the long term on uh, strong uh, values, and uh, addressing some, uh, some vexing difficulties uh, like the um, uh, energy security issue, which uh, I, I mentioned earlier. This will be done 10 days after NATO has a, a, its own uh, summit meeting in uh, Lisbon. 
NATO, as you know, is working very hard on determining its own vision of its future through the strategic concept. And part of its own vision of the future is, is how to relate with other organizations. What is the respective roles? Uh, and this is uh, something which will have to be addressed. There is a lot of uh, interest in the think tanks right now on both sides of the Atlantic and uh, including uh, <coughs> within uh, Eurasia about how the uh, um, everything progressively works together and falls into place. Uh, for those who uh, have the memory of it in 1999, uh, in a, almost a similar juncture, uh, we had a, a NATO summit, an OSCE summit, and great changes within the European Union. This year, 11 years later, we have great changes within the European Union, a NATO summit, and an OSCE summit. The, uh, American experts call this triple crown. Uh, in order for the crowns to fit together and to make sense, you have to uh, make some effort. And, and this is in itself a, a political uh, uh, challenge. And of course, the relationship between Russia and its key partners will be absolutely central. Uh, where does Russia feel comfortable? With whom? Uh, where does the Medvedev ideas about a security treaty of a new sort fit exactly? Do they fit within OSCE, which has been the answer provided by the uh, partners of Russia within OSCE? What is the specific role of the uh, NATO-Russia uh, Council, which meets much less frequently than, uh, than the OSCE, because uh, the Permanent Council of the OSCE is permanent. It meets uh, every, uh, every Thursday, it meets when the chairmanship calls it, and it even meets uh, during the breaks occasionally, which makes the life of the ambassadors far less comfortable uh, because they, uh, they have to be on call at, uh, at any, uh, any given moment. Uh, so all this makes uh, the current circumstances uh, interesting. All this means that uh, when uh, we will have had those summits, when uh, we will have had this difficult negotiation, there will be a package emerging which will be the declaration and the plan of action coming out of, uh, of the Astana summit. And uh, uh, this will be one of the roadmaps to be followed by the Lithuanian chairmanship. Any chairmanship has to combine its plans, its priorities, the area where, with, where it wants to put uh, its political will, its, uh, its vision of things, uh, the mandates which it has to implement from, uh, from previous uh, ministerial councils and in the particular case from a, a previous summit, and then the reality that the world is disorderly and unpredictable and that you have crisis all the time and that you have to address those, uh, those crises. So the, the job of the presidency is not only to chair in Vienna, it is also for the Minister, for the minister of Foreign Affairs, the chairman in office, to travel a lot, to be in contact with all the flashpoints, to uh, be in contact with, with all his, uh, his colleagues, to create that spirit of uh, consensus at a given moment, to interact with other international organizations, particularly the EU, of course, for Lithuania, it, it's easier, but uh, in, with Kazakhstan this year, we had an unusual situation. We, we had a, a situation where the chairmanship of the organization was not a member of the EU. We had had a run of about four or five previous chairmanships, which were all members of the, uh, of the uh, EU. It greatly facilitated things. The chairmanship knew what was going on in the EU. It understood the complex process of the EU's own process of building uh, consensus. Kazakhs were out of it, and they had absolutely no, no tradition, no understanding of how it worked. They adjusted to it. And, uh, and I think it worked fairly well. But the uh, coordination meetings we have regularly between the EU and OSC under those circumstances had a particular uh, meeting, meaning Lithuania will have an, an easier ride. Uh, and after Lithuania, we should have uh, Ireland coming. And beyond that, uh, Ukraine is interested in taking over the chairmanship in 2013. So the, the inclusive and integrative uh, role of OSC will, will continue in uh, involving EU and non-EU non countries to, to run this uh, great project.